today I'm going to replace the spark plugs on my 2005 F-150 5.4 liter. I, this is going to be the second time I've replaced them. I replaced them before back on the 26th of April in, in 2013. The truck had uh, 128,000 miles on it, so the spark plugs now have 76,835 miles on them. And so I'm replacing them with the HT, the HT15. The original plugs then that I'm replacing are HT1 Autolite plugs. So here's what the HT1 look like. These are supposed to be an improvement over the stock plugs and that they're a one piece design. To me, however, it looks like this is one piece and that's one piece. This on this plug is all one piece. But you can see the problem with these plugs and I'll go over the Ford technical service bulletin in just a minute and we'll talk about that more. But I'm replacing them with the uh, HT15 which is an improved design. The box says it's a one piece design. However to me it looks like that piece and that piece are separate and that's the issue. This piece can separate from the spark plug and stay down in the bore or it can drop into the cylinder. Also this plug looks like it's two piece here. So this is a piece and that's a piece. You see how that piece looks like it's welded to this piece. So I hope that's not an issue down the road. So this is a technical service bulletin that I printed out back when I changed the plugs back in 2013. You see the technical service bulletin. This is a 0876 and the date of issue is 2008. Covers all of these vehicles that had the 5.4 liter and the 4.6 liter. At least the V3 or the three valve engines that had that spark plug that protrudes down into the cylinder. So the overall procedure, I'm not going to read this to you, but it says remove the coil on uh, plug assemblies and then spray the area with compressed air, spray out the bore, back out the, the spark plugs no more than an eighth to a quarter of a turn using Mortarcraft carburetor tune-up cleaner, fill the spark plug well just above where the jam nut, the hex nut sits, or a half to three quarters of a teaspoon of carburetor cleaner. The minimum period of 15 minutes to soak time is required. The cleaner will wick down to the ground electrode shield and soften the carbon deposits in this time. Do not work the spark plug back and forth at this point. So it, it goes on to say that you do work the spark plug back and forth. It also says that you want the engine to be cold and not warm or not hot. The latest service information that I have from Ford on my 5 liter says that they want the engine to be warm. So I recommend that you have the engine warm, but they also say that that could damage the threads on the spark plug. At least this bulletin from back when I did it before, back in 2013. So I haven't gone online to see if there's an updated procedure. You probably should if you want to read over the procedure. But I'm going to talk about how I'm replacing the new plugs, how I'm going to do it since this is an improved design plug and they shouldn't break off. So to go on to the next step, Ford says, caution, do not use air or power tools for spark plug removal. Use only hand tools. So step three is tighten and loosen the spark plug, working the plug back and forth some squeeching and high effort may be noticed. The expected removal torque is 33 foot pounds or 45 Newton meters. Repeat the back and forth turning as needed until turning effort is reduced. And at least on my spark plugs that I have now, you, it's very noticeable when the threads become wet. So the thread should be installed with using a coating of Motorcraft high temperature nickel anti-seize lubricant on the ground electrode shield. Do not coat the electrode strap because it'll probably misfire if you do. So 
that's the gist of it. And then it talks about the three modes of failure if you should have a spark plug that breaks off in the bore. And it talks about how to remove those electrodes. I'm not going to go into that. I know there's a lot of videos online that talk about removing that. So I'm simply going to remove plugs that have already been removed before. So if you still have a 2004 to 2008 5.4 liter that you've never removed the plugs on, then I recommend that you go back and look at this service procedure, this technical bulletin, and make sure you follow it so you don't break your plugs off. I'm not as concerned about my plugs since they have been replaced before. But let me talk about what, I've, what I'm doing here today. This is the issue that the Ford Service Bulletin is talking about. This electrode that protrudes down into the cylinder. You can see right here, this is the, the seat, the spark plug seat, and the threads. So this is the sealing surface right here. So this goes down into the, the head. So this can allow carbon to come up here. And you can see how this one is rust colored. And there's some carbon that is backed up here that becomes cemented in as that corrodes and builds up carbon. And since the original plugs were a two-piece, this would separate and this piece would either fall down into the cylinder or it'd get stuck in that bore and then you'd have to extract it. So that's the issue. Why they designed it like that, I have no idea, but that to me is a, a very big problem. So my procedure today is an abbreviated method of that troubleshooting bulletin. I'm going to blow off the engine. I've already vacuumed off the top of the engine the best I could, which wasn't very good. I probably should have washed my engine prior to doing this, but I didn't. So I, I blew off the engine. I'm going to use lots of compressed air today. And as soon as I take the coils out, I'm going to blow out the bore again. And so my abbreviated procedure goes like this. I'm going to take one coil off. They simply come off with a, a seven millimeter socket use a variety of extensions, a quarter inch is, is plenty to take them off. I'm going to take off one coil and then soak the bore for just a few minutes as I loosen up the next coil. I'm going to loosen the spark plug about an eighth of a turn and then I'm going to go ahead and take the next coil out, soak it, go back and tighten up the first spark plug that eighth of a turn and then loosen it an eighth of a turn and then I'm going to soak the second bore and spray out the bore each time as I take the coil out. I'm going to fill up that bore up to the hex on the spark plug and let it soak and then the next continue down the line like that so I'm staggering. I'm taking off one coil soaking the bore and by the time I get to the third spark plug, I anticipate that the first one will be ready to take off. And when I did the other bank, when I did the left side bank of this engine, the at that point, you could it was noticeable. The threads were wet and the spark plug was ready to come out. So with that, to get the spark plug out of the bore, the only other thing I needed was a magnetic retrieval tool to get the spark plug out and then use it to put the spark plug back in so you're not dropping the spark plug back into the bore. And the spark plug easily seats itself back in the bore so you just use your deep well socket or a spark plug socket and thread the spark plug back into the hole.
it feels like the number one cylinder spark plug has loosened up because the threads have become wet. So I failed to mention it before, but in order to keep the carburetor cleaner from getting down inside the cylinder, I'm going to use compressed air and spray it out. I'm going to use a rag. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses when you're doing this and a pair of safety glasses you don't care about because you get some on the safety glass, it's going to ruin the safety glasses. But I'm going to blow out that carburetor cleaner. In order to keep it from going down inside the bore. Looks pretty clean. Okay, there it is. You can tell it's gotten a little wet right there. So you can see how it's probably left some down in the bore. It's cleaned itself off as it came out. And you see how dirty it is down in there. So that's the number one spark plug. I don't know if you can tell if it's going to focus for me here. If you can tell the wear that's on the tip. I've noticed that some of the tips aren't square anymore. A cylinder on the, the very tip. Let's see if I can get it hold still so it'll autofocus. Do a quick breakaway so I can show you what the plugs look like and what I was talking about. The right side bank, the one through four cylinders, look like they're burning quite a bit clean cleaner than the left side with the exception number three but you can tell what i'm talking about with how dirty this bore area is that's down in the cylinder how dirty it is how carboned up it is and then here's the left side bank they're not burning near as as clean as the other bank and look how much junk has come out with these and that right up to that ceiling surface dirty looking plugs and then in this bank too you can tell the electrode here is much more rounded much more worn on this bank than on the other bank Okay, well I'm going to spray out that bore that doesn't have a spark plug in it and then I'm going to go ahead and put a spark plug back in that number one so it doesn't get dirty down in the cylinder. Now if you know that you've got carburetor cleaner down in your bore, you can make sure you use compressed air and, and attempt to blow it out. If you know you got a lot of carburetor cleaner, that's going to cause a hydro lock situation and that Ford technical service bulletin warns against that. That's why they're telling you just use enough carburetor cleaner to get up to this hex, which isn't very much. So you could always turn the engine over and not run it and turn it over with the plugs out of it. But uh, if you do what I just said, where you spray compressed air around it, you're not getting very much carburetor cleaner down into that bore. So you should be fine. I'm going to use a good nickel anti-seize on all the threads of my plugs. So here's the, the seating surface and this protrudes down into the cylinder. All I need to do is coat this up here where the threads are at. Well, that shows you the gist of it. Um, I'm going to continue to work on this number four. That one's the one that's the hardest to get to. It's much easier than number eight that's back over there on the left-hand side since it's got the 
PCM in the way and the, the heater hoses are in the way. A little dielectric grease back on the insulator of the coil and on the plug end and clean up the bolts with a little anti-seize on the bolts and they go back in just like they came out. Okay, so that's the plugs installed, the coils reinstalled, and I'm going to fire up the truck before I remount the PCM back on the firewall. Yeah, so it fired up and ran smoothly. I'm going to clean this ground behind the PCM before I put the PCM back on, since I have access to it. With the ground cleaned up, it's just a matter of mounting the PCM bracket and putting the PCM back on the bracket. Well, that concludes the video. If you found it helpful, let me know in the comments. And if you did, please subscribe.